Genice na YouTube bundles. Dial star 555 star 55 hash to get your bundles today. And so of late, Kibra has been that word in the lips of many or on the lips of many. Kibra's finest, Kibra's by-elections, Kibra's what, 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 Kibra's best. And so today on The Millionaire's Mind, we feature Kibra's Millionaire Mind, Gazla Wafalme. That one man who makes a living out of art and not just art, but technically ile art and craft. The one that you learned in school, you know, beading, lots of artwork and, you know, painting and all that. And of course, he's doing it a little bit different. We'd love to understand what it is that he does that makes him earn that living. Right here on The Millionaire's Mind, you know we're always about business. With me, Linda Alela. Stay tuned. My name is uh, Gazla Mafalme, and uh, I'm the founder of a Street Art Gallery, which is well based at Kenyatta Market, Ngumo. So uh, I'm a hip hop artist, and also I do poetry. But I ventured so much in um, uh, beadworks because nilikuwa na una passion yangu iko sana kwa beadworks. You nilikuwa na leta food kwa kwa table. I did hip hop and I did poetry for some time, but I nilikuwa na leta I nilikuwa na leta food kwa table sana. So I concentrated so much on um, beadworks because nilikuwa nazitengeneza, naziuza, then I get something little to, to sustain my life. I started this job in 19... Uh, during post-election violence because that time we couldn't get out and kufutafute kazi. Iyo time yote, 2007-2008, we are so idle, so niliona it's good to... Nikuwa nakatu kwa nyumba, nikifanya hizo jobs, za kutengeneza hizo beadworks, nikuwa kwa nyumba. And mostly nilianza na anklet, paper mache niliona it's so easy kutengeneza paper, paper mache, chains from paper mache because I could find paper mache anywhere and collect life on the sock and tengeneza chains from it like necklaces and uh, uh, bracelets. So that was, that is me, Gazla Mafalme. All right, and here we are with Gazla, an interesting session I must say because this is just art as you might want to look at it, but art with a purpose. And not just a purpose, but equally art that is there to raise very many kids. I've had a session with him and I am telling you, my mind was blown as to what he is actually doing. You know, the fact that he loved this, he equally felt like there are other people who would be out there to love it. And he's not just looking at them, he's equally bringing them on board to do this. So when you say it, I go in a later food court table, all these other things that are there. Did you 101% stop doing them? No, I didn't stop doing them because mm -hmm. I, I, I was going to events, different events, but I wasn't being paid. Yeah. So by that time, I was like, I could go without food, mm -hmm. I could go without transport, but I had that passion to do poetry and music. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I can't, work, I can't go to do something that is not bringing food something to the table. At the table. end of the day, you have to make yeah, a living. A living, yeah. yeah. So I was like, let me do something which is, could bring food on my table. Mm -hmm. So poetry and music, I mm -hmm. just put them aside, but I registered them to Skiza Tune. I get some little money on it, and I've registered the music cooperative of Kenya. Ah, uh, ulipata ka 2000, 200, 2000? 264. Ah, all right, well, good. Yeah. <laughs> that aside, yeah. uh, the time ulianza, and the time that you're in right now, almost 10 years down the line, right? Yeah. Which is something that is very much commendable. That is then to mean that is something that indeed someone can depend on to make a living. What were the challenges then or what were the good, uh, what was the market then in comparison to what you witnessed today? Uh, the good thing with the, uh, with jailer when I started, mm -hmm. I, uh, I used to get customers because uh, at that time, I remember uh, after two or three years, the syllabus changed. Uh, schools didn't have the, the, the Art and craft. Art and craft and music, and music syllabus, yes. so it was pulled out. Uh -huh. So people wanted uh, like handmade stuffs, like, uh -huh. you know, very much. And yeah. I used to see them going to Karyoko Market, like Karyoko Market to buy handmade stuffs, uh -huh. Masai Market to buy handmade stuff. And I was like, if I, if I told I'm good at this, and also we have internet, so I can sell some of my prop, uh, uh, products, online. products on, online. Wow. So I, I came up with an IG page, uh -huh. uh, then Facebook page, small, small, but WhatsApp also. Uh -huh. So. The first sales, the first sales I made was for was going to France. Wow! Uh, and I made more than seventy thousand. 
So I made those. Uh, I, I was given an order, mm -hmm. made that order, but I didn't. I didn't. I didn't ship them. Mm -hmm. There was a person that came that um, bought from me directly. Right. Then he went there with them to France. To France. So that's when. Uh, my business boomed up. Mm, that's good. Uh, uh, of course, I'm, I'm yet to ask you, you were talking about beads, but we can also see that uh, you have paintings. But before I get to that, and even before I get to ask you uh, of your type of market, I think it's important that then I get to understand, like, every other time, as time goes by, beads are considered to be very expensive. The pieces that you have right here are considered to be very expensive. I mean, whatever it is that you're doing it from, you know, that street aspect and everything, how are you able to convince the market around you that, you know what, this is something you can also get, this is something you can afford. Uh, it does not really matter who you are or where you come from. Uh, that's why I decided to partner with some other guys. Mm. I work with Kevin Vick, I work with some artists, different artists. Yeah. And also, working, uh, coming with them together, mm -hmm. we, sit, we sit together and we decide like, which, p uh, which price can be suitable on this piece. And, right. you know, that's, that's why it's called street art gallery. Mm -hmm. It's just on the street so that each and every individual can afford this. This, this business is not for tourists. It's just for local and yeah. everyone who come in. But now, I, I, I came up with this part, uh, uh, as in I partnered with some other guys because mm -hmm. I wanted to make uh, to make sure that now they can they can make a piece yeah. and then after making a piece they can put a reasonable price that that is worth that piece mm -hmm. depending on which contest they, uh, are. that they have yeah and when you say when it's worth when you're talking about the worth then it does not mean overcharging not overcharging mm -hmm. I mean like a reasonable price as in a, a price that somebody can afford mm -hmm. a local person can afford mm -hmm. not as in you know I am Somewhere looking there. at the environment uh, yeah. where the, sh you, the shop is based, yeah. you know, and, and, and I'm thinking the people around there, not to look down upon them, but to equally say that, you know, there are people who sort of, uh, you know how the economy yeah. is, eh? yeah. how tight the economy can be. But equally, they would want to have such a piece in their house. Equally, they would want to look good, you know, have a nice neck piece on their, on, on their, on their, on their, on their, of course, necks and all that. So do you sort of feel like, you know, the pricing that you set up is something that is affordable and is something that is manageable by any other person that walks into your shop actually if somebody comes and uh, uh, he says he wants a certain piece made of this kind of piece and then uh, he cannot afford this mm -hmm. this uh, the amount that we, 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 we talked about yeah then what we do uh, we, we normally we normally make some small pieces like from A4 or yeah. th A3, mm -hmm. the, uh, the piece that he can afford, right. depending on how much uh, he or she has. Okay. Uh, it can so be you A4, no, you customize mm -hmm. Instead of now putting very high price on this, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, the, uh, the person can't afford that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So do you, I, I want to assume that the best piece you've ever made is one that you're wearing on your neck, yeah. or maybe there's, one, there's a different one that you this have is the made. Best, this is the best piece I've made, and even this one I can't sell it. Oh, because, really? Why? Yeah, because What's the, the story behind the it? Stones, the stones came from West Africa. Uh -huh. So the stones, they're called amber. Yeah. So when they come from West Africa, um, uh -huh. I, they come with the, they come when they are in pieces, then I assemble them. Oh, okay. And then I, I normally make, make long ones and small ones, mm -hmm. but actually I like this because it, was, it comes from West Africa. The most nice. expensive jewelry, the most expensive pieces of art comes from West Africa. Oh, like really? Congo, yeah. yeah. This is pretty much yeah. beautiful, lot yeah. of, I must yeah, say. I so you can sell this. Uh, but at least you can make more that look like I that. I can make more than this, but, but now one piece of this stone mm -hmm. costs mm -hmm. 100. Okay. So one piece, like now, the, the smaller the piece, the smaller the price. But okay. Now the big, yeah. So that's that's how much it's cost. All right. Uh, speaking of which, availability. You talked about you know getting those one uh, those pieces from West Africa, from okay, well from Congo. Yeah. Um, availability of the beads. How available are they, and how easy is it to for you to go out and find? And there are times. Are there times that you have to travel out of the country to go get them? No, I have I have so many pieces that. Uh, thank God that we have now internet. Once I see somebody is in West Africa mm -hmm. and is coming to Kenya, right. I just send him to. I tell him to come with some pieces from you know because he sends me some different samples yeah yeah and, and also maybe from coast mm -hmm. anywhere just for the shares all right know, yeah okay That's how I work, yeah. all right um your market uh you've talked about online and i'm thinking again most of the times we always look at this and we assume tourists mm -hmm. we assume that the good things are meant for the we people who are not here so no, no. Do you always focus on that and in terms of, uh, you know, buying? Because then generally, what is it like? No, we just, 
it's the, the price is normal. Mm -hmm. uh, no, not for standard Mzungu. for everyone. Standard for everyone. Wow. If I start this piece for two thousand five hundred, if Amazon comes, it's two thousand five hundred. Nice. If we, if you want to bargain, that's mm -hmm. that's that's my my mm. my I know I policy think, and um, all that. Uh -huh. But if Africa can come and bargain, it's also a piece of now. Yeah. So we don't target like Mzungu because if we're targeting Mzungu, and we are not tourists and. Uh, taking them to Masai Market or somewhere else where, where Mzungus come, mm. then you could have been here, like, making uh, money. Making money, yeah, true. But yeah. don't you think you're near Sarah Zana Kwa Biashara? Normally you're told, eh, yeah. ukiona amekuja ni Mzungu, ongeza be, I mean, technically Apana. that's how you grow. What, uh, like, like, if he comes once in a year, hmm. so utakuwa mmetakenza donkapi. So utakuwa sales every day, like, right. somebody comes today, he buys, tomorrow somebody comes, buys, we come up with another piece, we come mm. up with another ornament, we come up with another jewelry. True. Uh, instead okay. of now to not take the piece more to come next year or December, mm -hmm. then he buys at a hundred thousand yeah. or twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. In fact, this is how galleries are working now, mm -hmm. like corner trust and the other, you know, mm -hmm. pieces are there, but now it's expensive. Yeah. So it it, it it lasts like two three years in the in the in the gallery without being bought. All right. Lastly, on business niche, uh, streets art gallery, how does it speak? to the kids out there in the street? How does it speak to the people out there who are looking up to you, who are looking at themselves and they think, okay, I think I, I love art, I have talent in art. How does it speak to them? It's just, it was called just street art gallery because now any kid can come over and now do things on the street. It doesn't right. matter if it needs a classroom or somebody locked somewhere, you know, mm. for, for in enclosed place. It's, it's just street, you can come there, do your thing. If you like painting, you can paint. If you like jailer, you can do jailer. If mm -hmm. you like beadworks, you can come. It's, it's just street, you know. Mm -hmm. You can make a uh, painting and sell it on the street. Wow. You can make a jailer and sell it on the street. It's mm -hmm. just street art gallery. Mm -hmm. So when they hear of street gal art gallery, it's like, this thing is for the street, you know. It's not an enclosed place. They like can identify. They can associate. The schools, there's an association. Is a an organ. No, mm -hmm. it's just street art. And the, anybody can come in and do his own art thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, sell the piece. And also sell the piece just mm -hmm. on the streets. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Yes. Uh, there you go. And you heard so much of it. And like he said, he works with a couple of other guys. And that's exactly what we want to hear or what we want to see and witness. And we'll certainly cross over to talk to some guy called Kevo. And the other guy is called who? Uh, come on. Come on. Yeah. Uh, of course, we get to hear what they have to say about working with him and most importantly, just making a living out of art. On Colleague Talk. Kaminika Vuli Vuli, hip hop artist, Apevi Kibira, na nimefanya na gaz miaka kama 15 job. Yeah, na gaz ni mtu ana confidence, ni jamaa na fuata kazi yake na is hard working. Na amekuwa ki play big part kwa hii sasa ya Kibera. This is a person ule tunam respect sana na and he's been there. He's been there for us. Even when we are down doing business, he's always around. He's someone who can mobilize people too. And he's a hardworking person. So I respect God so much as my partner in business and in music and big business and art. So this is really big up to God and we're still working with him. And we don't know where we will end up to, but we will keep working with Gazlan. Kibira talking. Yeah. Okay, me and Tokevo. Many artists. Nafanya paintings, graffiti. So many lipatana na Gaz in the year 2016. So we from 2016 up to now. Yeah, ni msuwa ku encourage mtu. Because I try to show up to mob. Na vanyeneza pigana na life na kuhasulu kwa hisi ni yetu ya hatu. Ok, in the meantime, ninge penda kufanya biyashara still na girls sana. Yeah, na kwa nini, because this guy is really serious na kila siku na mkamoni. We he only think about art. Kila siku ya kia mkamoni. Na ana live art, ana kula art. Na nafanya art. So working with girls ni privilege ingine kubwa sana. Na watu wengi wanashanga sana. This guy 
hati yake ni kubwa mm? and mimi kwa kuna gaz nitawafine siku zote okay mimi mimi siezi acha kufanya job na gaz juu kitu ya kwanza yani tuseme nikio down kuna venye nani encourage alafu kuna venye nani ambianga yani ni si give up Hatu na locks zinaingiliana hivi juu. As artists, yeah. As artists, we are not in the corporate world. So there is no laws zinatuambia kama artist tusiweke nywele nini cause artist ni mtu creative. Yeye yeah, afanye kazi kwa ofisi but kazi yake ni safi sana. So locks, locks ni identity yetu hapa hivi Kenya as artist also. Na as wasani wa mta mimi naweza sema kitu kwanza akili ni nywele alafu kiwa artist lazima ukwe, ukwe creative so mimi venye niko na locks so zinanifanya na kuwa more creative okay mimi message naweza send ya gaz kama colleague wangu naweza mwambia gaz sijai kuona uki give up hizo miaka zote umeko ukiwork hard We don't give up cuz CC una to inspire na to give up cuz we know whenever there is a will kuna road na gaz na ku encourage keep doing this art na tutaenda mbali Okay mimi naweza mshukuru eh nimwambie tu mali popote yako na mshukuru hivyo tu alafu ile kitu aliniambianga hard work pay And on money talk, I know we've talked a bit about money, but man, conversations to do with money will always be there and there and there. And that's why we need to have this session and understand how much he makes. I don't know whether he's going to be willing to tell us how much he makes weekly because you started by saying that at some point in time you sold stuff to France you know 70,000 at a go mm. but you know in business it's not about what you sell at a go it's what about you constantly sell mm. and of course that one gives you the confidence to keep going so would you roughly tell us how much you would be making in a week out of the beads or maybe out of the pieces that we have here yeah uh, just in a day in a day make sure you sell something at least 500 mm -hmm. day, yeah. at least on a good day That's that's the minimum I do. All right, that's good. Yeah. Good enough of course when you make it monthly uh, uh, somewhere around 30,000 and above. Uh, yeah, yeah. It plays around there. Because if it doesn't work today like if if I told I told you won't you won't sell anything like today. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow it will double or mm -hmm. next day it will double, you know, mm -hmm. depending on maybe passers by and also which car, which day of which day of the week, right. maybe on a weekend or mm -hmm. a weekday. Mm -hmm. All right, that's good. Now, let's flash back or take us back a bit. Uh your capital how did you start this in as much as maybe it was passion and everything most of the people will not start business because they always live in that cocoon and that box of oh i don't have capital so how did you start this up actually i, I had 2000 shillings and then after doing some stuff like i had so many pieces in the house mm -hmm. so for the 2000 i just went to karyoko market and then bought the beads and mm -hmm. then started from there that was my start salary that was your starting yeah. salary okay all well, right and so far so shillings. good uh, so far so good you i've been there i've seen that for mm -hmm. for the past like more than 10 years doing that mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. it's pretty much expensive to sell these pieces uh, you know at in the curio shops sometimes you visit the curio shops and it's very expensive we have, we, do we you have, have like sessions when you send this to them and sell to them so that they can sell mm, that one be it, it That one we don't do it because it takes so much time mm -hmm. to, to sell these pieces in, uh, mm -hmm. in galleries because they take like two or three years. Mm -hmm. When you take a piece like this one, they will, they will put it in the gallery and then they maybe you are giving them a price tag of 10,000, they will write a price tag of 50,000. Ah. Then it lasts for so long, mm -hmm. so we don't do that. Right. What we normally do, we organize exhibitions. Mm -hmm. uh, we go for exhibitions and when we go for exhibitions, when we, when we we sell this piece at a higher price right. exhibition is different from the street okay. uh, from the street sales mm -hmm. when you go to exhibition we sell this pieces at a higher price than than what we do at the market at mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. all right sometimes you really don't have to put a price tag no. but you know there is that perception that you know it is expensive i just look at this piece and i think it's beautiful and i want to have it in my house but no oh, it's pretty much expensive maybe i cannot afford so what are you guys doing to scrap off that perception because at the end of the day the it costs so much in terms of you know making your pieces uh, sell 
the last time we, we, we did that, putting price tags on pieces, mm -hmm. it was in the high hub. In fact, we have some other pieces that are still in uh, Nairobi high hub. Mm -hmm. So we are told, like, let, let bring your pieces, then mm -hmm. put a price tag. Yeah. Then when we put a price, the price tag, it was so high because they were told, like, put such a piece, we put 120,000, mm -hmm. the other one put 400,000, mm -hmm. of which we didn't make any sale. Right. So we don't do that, uh, even if, when we go for exhibition. So it's a danger also to overcharge. Uh, to overcharge, because uh -huh. once you see a, a, a PC and it's 120,000, then right. Somebody thinks that this this thing is fixed and uh, you can bargain on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if I tell you this piece is five thousand, mm -hmm. you can bargain on it without yeah. seeing that price tag, right? right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe so I can say for you five thousand and just maybe two thousand. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then when you bargain, you come like we come to about three there, uh, which is fair enough. Which is fair enough. Mm -hmm. Then putting a price tag, then will scare someone to buy a piece. All right. Yeah. Okay. So what are the biggest business lessons, you know, money lessons you've ever picked as you proceed with this? Or as Pardon? you keep doing this, the biggest lessons you've picked in terms of you know finances and money and balancing the books. Just to keep on keep on moving, whether whether you are down, whether whether you don't make sales, just if you're passionate about something, just mm -hmm. do it, mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we have challenges, sometimes experiences, sometimes failures, sometimes you know. But what I normally say is keep on doing what you love mm -hmm. most. Yeah. 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 What is the longest piece you've had? I mean, is there a piece that has stayed in the shop for the longest of time that sometimes you feel like yeah, this, this one? Yeah, this one has stayed in the shop more than 20 years. More than 10 years, I mean. Why? Yeah. I think, I think um, it's because we used, we used, we used a flower. Oh, you nyunga chapo? You nyunga chapo, okay. then this is the color. Uh -huh. So it has, I don't know, hakuna mtu uliza, mtu uliza tu mara moja, there's a good explanation, uh -huh. so unajua. Okay. Uh, but ilikuwa tu ni portrait, nini, uh, abstract, kwa uh -huh. kuninyungu tu na kwa kayo colors. Uh -huh. uh, it has stayed for more than, you see hata na aribika. Ime aribika, a beautiful so, piece though, uh, I can't, I must piece, say. Yeah. Well, for the there's people who time, understand. There's a time, there's a time to repair, Nairobi Hayab, to Kasema, it was the 10,000. It was the cheapest quicker price tag for 10,000, but it didn't even go. Oops. So we just came with, with it back. All right, yeah. that aside, uh, something that is right behind me, the eye. Yeah. This, this caught my eye, you know, in a way. Yeah, this one is a cry for a country. A cry for a country is when, when you know, uh, it's, it's cancer. Kev is the one who did it, in fact. Bob. Okay. So after after Bob Colimo died because of cancer, uh -huh. then Leboso died of, because of the cancer, and then the cry after Kenneth Okoth. I've always like, maybe let me make this piece because This now is one of the recent pieces that pieces, we have yeah. because this, this happened latest, just yeah. the other yeah. day. Okay. Like, uh, cry for a country for cancer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Indeed, we're still crying as a uh, country. We can cancer. only hope to see yeah. what the government is going to do. Yeah, yeah. And generally, what we're going to do as a people, the discipline of eating and all that. Uh, exactly. All right, yeah. thank you so much. That is more like it or in money talk. Yeah. And now we cross over to Quick Fire, my favorite beat, of course, apart from learning more of business. So right here, keep it here. I like Octopizo so much. Ugali sikuma wiki yangu eh. Yes, I'm married. Reggae the most. Oh, Kevo, obvious. You're right, big up hip hop, big up a guzzler, and yeah. yes, some lines that I've picked. Upana chokoza mamba kabla ujavuka mto, mto, I'll add mine. Ustukani ukunga kabla uzazi ungali upo. Ustukani ukunga kabla uzazi ungali upo, upo. And that's where we're going to wind up. And that's technically what happens in business. You know, the tactics yeah. of surviving. Yeah. If you have to cross that river, make sure you don't mess up with the crocodiles in it yeah. if you know very well that you want to give birth at some point in time your man don't mess up with the midwives yeah. it's pretty much important and on business also i'm sure you've learned so much so focus passion resilience and certainly you'll get to make something out of what you do Big up. Thank Salute. you so much for having us. Salute. You're doing a good job. Thank you first so of much. all, for yourself Thank you. and for the entire community. Thank you so much. Salute you too. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. My name is Linda Alela on The Millionaire's Mind. See you again next time.